Welcome to this week's Eccentric Minute, brought to you by Eccentric. One of my favorite exercises to use with the K-Box is the K-Box Zercher Squat. Uh, the big thing with the equipment they provide is the bar is padded, so it's a lot more comfortable than you would be with a barbell, but it still is going to be all the upper back, leg, and core work of the normal Zercher Squat. A couple pro tips that I'd say here, make sure you've got a little bit more room on the strap at the top than you would guess so that you can keep it flowing smooth up and down. And I prefer to start this exercise at the bottom. So sit back, get all the way down into that deep squat position, chest up, abs tight, and start driving up. With the goal to keep your posture high and move fluidly through the range of motion, this is an absolute favorite of mine, and I hope you guys give it a try with your K-Box today. I really hope you enjoyed this week's Eccentric Minute. Make sure you check them out at eccentric.com to find out everything you need about the K-Box and the K-Pulley. Being a strength and conditioning professional requires constant pursuit of better knowledge, better methods, and better means. But what if there was a place where strength and conditioning coaches could learn from some of the most innovative practitioners in the world, such as Jeff Moyer, Lachlan Wilmot, William Wayland, James the Thinker Smith, and Kirwenham Flat? Well, you can find multiple lectures from each of these top-level coaches and a few lectures and examples from yours truly as well, all in the Strength Coach Network. The Strength Coach Network is going to bring you well over 100 different lectures from some of the top practitioners in the world to be your one-stop shop for your continuing education and professional development. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. That's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS to get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Dr. Nelly, fired up to have you today, man. Good to see you. How things going, brother? Man, I'm doing great, Coach. Great to, great to see you today. Appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, brother. Well, it's great to have you back. A lot of people may not remember, but it was – almost in the single digits where we had, uh, you know, you guys all here rapping about things that were going on down in Texas. But for the half a human being that's living under a rock right now, let's let them know where Josh Nelson is and, and how he got there. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah, so um, everybody calls me Nelly. My name is Josh Nelson. Uh, I'm Assistant Athletic Director of Applied Health and Performance Science here at Penn State. Basically, that's just kind of a fancy title for uh, the, the guy that leads up charge for studying and bringing different uh, innovative ideas to people and packaging it and using it and, um, and sharing it. So, um, you know, we're super blessed here. I have a great assistant, John Flurry. Um, he was with us at um, a couple other places in Texas. And then he's been around some different spots as well. But he does an amazing job for us. And you know, I think we probably have one of the coolest jobs in the country right now because we absolutely get to study performance every day. Some fantastic coaches here, and we get to learn from all of them and, and mix and mash and be able to, you know, uh, apply things in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and, and I think that one thing that we were kind of talking about before that you guys are doing really exceptionally well is communicating not just with the staff and the athletes and, and – everyone up in, you know, up at Penn State, but also how you're sharing and bringing about that information to everybody else. And I think that one thing that we probably should talk about first is kind of the communication aspect and, and the building of the program when it comes to starting with the low-hanging fruit and kind of how you've determined the, the hows, what's, and why's of how to navigate and build off of that to start to go to more of the advanced things so that they can be more advanced, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think um, if, if you look at our, our program, I think one of the most attractive things to me, you know, even before I was here, um, that, that Dave Hamilton started with this position was the idea that is it's very multifaceted. It's, it's called applied health and performance science. So there's literally two pieces to the pie here. The applied health side is, you know, maximizing athlete, coach, well-being, you know, lifestyle. We're focusing on everything from, you know, choices to positive habits. And that's essentially the foundation. You know, you set that foundation and then it gets to some higher order things like you had mentioned, the, the elite performance on top where we're 
finding small little marginal gains to add to the add to the bigger piece and then that's elite performance or the performance science piece and that's where we bring in some of our advanced technologies and and the use of data to drive some of our decisions that we make um, but to your point i think it's uh it's all about getting people to buy in you know i think it's i can't work on the top part of the pyramid if i don't have a foundation and that's where communicating across the masses exists you know it's you know, I, I can interface with athletes and, and talk to them about, let's just say sleep. We're going through sleep right now in the month of September. I can interface with athletes, talk to them one on one basis, you know, or I can package information and give it to a lot of different people. It could be in the form of coaches, support staff. It could be people in the community. Um, and then as we're all organized and, and, and going in that route, athletes are then positively influenced. Um, you know, it's a, I'm, I show my bias a little bit because I, I do view myself as a teacher more than anything. And I think that's where everything starts is we don't want to give information. We want to impact positive behaviors. That's a powerful line. That's a really powerful line. And I think that a lot of us need to take a step back, maybe hit that 15 second refresh really quick and listen to that again, because I think a lot of us as coaches especially us older heads that have beards and gray hair and all that stuff have been really stuck in that mindset of uh, kind of like dictating the path. And that really isn't how these young people are wired today. Yeah. You know, that's, it's, it's interesting because it's really easy for us to do that. You know, I, I, you know, I think we all have personal bias, you know, things that we learn, we feel comfortable with and, we have a style of teaching, but I think in today's age, I think you hit it right on right on the head. Was you know, if we can emulate positive behaviors, we then develop a relationship with the athletes. They see that you know our behaviors, much like teachers in a classroom, drive the environment the athletes learn from. So even in in my meeting room or on the weight room floor on the, on the playing field, if I'm if I'm acting a certain way, my, that's the environment that I'm setting for my athletes. Uh, so I think our behaviors as coaches and the way we interact with them and, and the overall vibe that we set and the expectations, because this is a big part. It's not just, you know, fluffy and lovey-dovey. The expectations we set for our athletes, that's the environment that they're learning in. So I think it's really impressionable. Uh, but us as coaches, we always just got to stay open-minded as well. Now, just to kind of backtrack for a second, you said that September is, it has a focus and sleep is that. Is there a specific reason why the first full month of the school year is sleep? And if so, is that something that you revisit every year? It is. It is. So we go, I typically like to uh, initially at the beginning of everything, uh, start with some sort of academic fast start. The most important thing for us as college athletes who, you know, we are our athletes and coaches. We're all in this together. The beginning of any semester the beginning of any period um, exists with a lot of different stressors. And, and what we've learned from a lot of wonderful people um, within the research is that stressors are accounted for by the body in a similar way. It doesn't discriminate between a physical stressor, a mental stressor, academic load. We just have processes upregulate to fight that stressor. And stress is good, but we just have to be able to manage that. So early in the semester, if we can apply a lot of resources to getting our academics on, on lock, if we can get our schedule, our, our personal routines on lock, and then once we get into September, after we've got academics and lifestyle on lock, we go into sleep, we've set a great foundation. You'll keep hearing me say that word, foundation, up for the more advanced levels of physical stress that we're going to encounter down the field. So it's just like capacities. You know, right now I'm focusing my capacities on making sure I'm right. I got to live righteous. Okay. Then later on, I can focus my capacities on physical development, you know, higher end academics, whatever I need to do throughout that semester. So very much a college model um, at the university level, but you could apply it in high school. You could apply it to life, anything coach. Oh, no doubt brother. And then how do you progress that throughout the year? Cause I think that one thing, 
that a lot of strength coaches have that are, you know, mid-major and down is they look at things like this and then they're like, well, yeah, I mean, that's cool, but like, how am I going to do this? So how do you formulate how you periodize the education and then how do you alter what your kind of direction is with these education pieces throughout the season? Yeah, I think, I think it's just one being a coach, keeping an eye out for what's going on. Um, you know, we, we work in performance science, so we want to find ways that, you know, we can use evidence to, to impact that behavior. So looking out at the, across the entire year of a college athletes, what are big time stressors that may impact them? Okay, once I know the stressors, it's just like programming in the weight room. This is going to be a heavy week. So how do I get there working backwards? And then I take whatever unit that may be appropriate to prepare them for those stressors. And then I may talk about it. Also, just look at kind of current events. You know, what is occurring in the world? You know, what can we apply to a, a conversation? It could be sleep. It could be drug and alcohol education. These are off the field things that we're talking about, but they directly impact lifestyle, which we've already established is going to go upstream and, and impact our performance. So if we can get these things right, just looking across the year, what are the stressors that may curb performance, mitigate them, then we can focus what's really mattering in the weight room and on the practice field, meeting room, the sport. Yeah, man. And I think that that's something that isn't necessarily something that's hard and it isn't necessarily something that is complicated but I think that it's something that can be challenging because you either need to be somewhat creative with it or you may have to go in a direction that might not be as comfortable for a strength coach because it's not we're working on your energy system development. Right. And, 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 you know, not to say that that can't come in there. You know, I think it's, I, I typically want to develop a fluent athlete because I, at the end of the day, you know, this is uh, at the, at the end of the day, you, you, you either want to produce a professional athlete or you want to produce a great mom or a dad, somebody that can teach sport. So that's where we want to drive our content as it pertains to, you know, sport education. Um, physiology of training, understanding why we do what we do. Because one, if I, let's say I have an athlete that becomes a professional athlete, I would love for him or her to be able to, you know, actively select a, a great uh, trainer later in their career, be able to, to understand the dynamics of a calendar year and how I need to work back from when I start in camp. Um, conversely, if I have a mom or a dad, I need to understand the basics of how I should teach a little kid. You know, it may not be loading on a heavy back squat. It may be, hey, let's start with a body weight squat. Or it could be a little bit more com complex. Like I don't want an athlete or my, my son or daughter working with a coach that's putting them in a, in a tough, tough situation. So I think there's room for us talking about lifestyle. There's room to talk about training. And it just goes into the whole sense of developing a comprehensive athlete that understands you know, the whole training and, and development, adaptation, development of an athlete. Um, and then they can share it to somebody else. Yeah, and I think that when you're looking at that holistic approach, sometimes it gets overwhelming for coaches because at times it's hard to see the forest through the trees. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And I think that's where we just have to start small and grow uh, vertically and horizontally. Use the example recently, this is not an original idea by any means, this is stolen from some, just how, how children learn and develop is, you know, the idea of scaffolding. You know, I, I build a scaffold, you know, if I'm a painter and I'm gonna paint a, paint a building, I build a scaffold and then I put another one on top of it and another one on top, but I can't just keep going vertically. I also have to go horizontally to so make sure it's got a great um, base of support. So think about that as a coach, if we're working in the weight room and we're loading physically, I'm going to go up and sideways. Same thing if I'm sharing content, sharing education, I want to be able to develop the person, the learner vertically and sideways as well, much like a scaffold. Yeah. So then as we're starting to look at things and how they're progressing, obviously in this world of, of athletics that we 
like to dabble our lives in, things have been unique. So what are some unique challenges that Dr. Coach Nelly is dealing with now? And how do you feel that this is going to have a positive impact on how you're able to move forward when it comes to this entire high performance model, which is obviously fluid at all times? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I think for me, just coming up as a coach, I, I, I so value the, the personal relationship with both coaches and athletes. And, you know, I think in what, what we've encountered over the past, you know, six to eight months now is it's changed the way we can interact with people. It's changed the way, you know, we can just bounce around from program to program or facility to facility. But I think it's really helped us really tune in on being specific and intentional with what we're doing. Um, I, I've, long, I've long felt that, you know, social media and, and YouTube are some of the most powerful teaching tools out there. So I think allowing us to not always be on the floor potentially or at practice, it's a great opportunity for us to leverage those educational tools to share to the masses and then to promote and empower other people to take that message. Um, but as far as um, the way things have changed, I think it's just allowing us to reconceptualize how we use content, how we're gonna program, how we're gonna communicate with people. Um, you know, I think that's that's the biggest thing that you know I've really kind of taken taken um, in and, and had a lot of thought about. Uh, that's sensational, buddy. And the reason I think that's so important is if we were to think back, right? So, like ten or so years ago, could you ever have imagined yourself saying that YouTube and Instagram were important for how you did anything? Like when it came to building these programs and how much this has evolved. Yeah, no, not at all. You know, I think I remember, I, I, I think you, you'd be in the same boat as well. Just I remember when social media first came up and I was, you know, pretty averse to, you know, going on it because I, I was being uh, drawn to it. But now I think, you know, look at the amazing amount of content uh, that's pushed out every single day, you know, especially within our community. What a great learning tool, provided that we stay positive. You know, I think there is, there is the, um, the tendency sometimes out there, not just in our field, but in life, to be able to you know, heavily scrutinize certain thought. But I think if we stay positive and we share things and we can really break down some walls, what an ability to have access to people that we've never had access to. What a great uh, ability to create a community of practice where we're all sharing content that you know, may never happen without that. Yeah, and I think that that's a huge nugget right there, the idea of sharing content. I think that all too often with, again, it's mostly my generation and the older coaches that are at fault where they look at people that do things like that. It's like, well, it's not coaching, it's not on the floor, you know, like the kind of grumpy old, get off my lawn strength coach type thing. And that's, if you can flip your mindset to we're able now, you use mine, I use yours, we're able to then find something better and drive even better, whether it be information, or graphics, or ways of communicating it. I think that that really, especially today, is priceless. I agree. You know, it's um, Dr. Sebastian Ella, He's a, he's our orthopedic surgeon here, and I had a I had a conversation with him on the sideline last last fall, and we were talking about the way the medical community shares information with research. And it, it doesn't exist like that in coaching because of the competitive advantage um, associated with you know this this is my work, and I need to make sure I protect it. Um, but basically if I have a physician or a researcher that comes up with an innovation that can help the masses, yes, they get, they get credit for it, you know, however that goes, but then it's automatically disseminated to everybody so that they can use that within coaching, within performance. Imagine if we could get to that point where yes, we guard the competitive um, advantage that we have with our current tactics and techniques that we employ 
but think about some of the, the foundational things that we can help the entire field. Because if we contribute to the field, the entire boat rises. Yeah, I mean, it really does. And if we can just think about it as, as other fields are, I think we can do a lot of neat things with just continuing to push our field forward. Yes, and I also think too, that even more so, as we do that, what's good about our field is that we're also very competitive. Yeah. So like, oh, that's a cool graphic Nelly did. Hmm. See if I can find a way to like put a little more, add a little bit better to it, you know? And it's not like a, you know, like a, like a jab or it's like a, yeah, like, motivated to be better and to try to to drive better conversation or even more so like when we do end out when i end out do putting out things that are like when the few that i put on like this is what we look at with hrv or whatever it may be those have been some of the best conversations like through those because people ask questions about it and it's not yeah. that they're questioning it it's that they want to know what you're doing and why and then understanding how they can make better decisions or look at things differently for their kids. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, what, what an amazing conversation starter. What a, it's the, you know, your work is sparking additional work other places. And then if it comes back to you, I mean, it's just, it continues to contribute to the knowledge base and then contributing to people, all of our ability to reach an athlete, reach another coach that may be able to benefit from that. Um, what a what a platform and an opportunity to share things and then and then like what you're doing here and what you always do with your podcast and and bringing people in and talking and being open you're breaking down walls and, and just building the overall knowledge of, of our entire field which is it's it's incredible well I appreciate that and I think the other thing too that what I really like about this and what you're doing is it's what people forget is once it's on the internet, it's there forever. Yeah. So like we could go back and we could talk about, we could just start talking sleep right now. Right. Cause that's the sexy, cool thing. I've got my aura ring on. Everybody's doing something with it, talking about this, that, and the third with it. And we could come back in six, eight, 10, 12 months and be like, yeah, so kind of half of that, not really what we're doing anymore. And this is why we changed it. And those things I think are what get drastically overlooked when it comes to creation of different things to help educate people. Yeah, yeah I agree. You know, I, it's funny you say that because I've been trying to um, not necessarily be active as much. Uh, when, I, when I first started pushing content on social media is because some of my athletes followed me and it was just a way to reinforce a team talk that I did following a lift, you know, and I would hit a lift uh, with the guys and then we would talk about a topic. And then that night I would share something on social media and they would all kind of like comment on it. So it's just an extra touch that you have with them. But looking back at some of those original things, I kind of shake my head and just be like, you know, that was, that was either incorrect or, you know, I have a better way to conceptualize that now, or, you know, that would not work in this situation. But I think you're right. Just being able to continue to grow, even off our own personal stuff. Um, and you know something, coach, one thing for me too, that it's helped me do is when you do get on and let's say you're, you're sharing something and you're going to put it out for people, it does help you develop as, as a communicator. Um, I, I, I'm, I have a, strong southern accent at times and when I get excited certain words are uh, sound different but as I do this and continue to develop uh, communicating it helps me and I found it makes me feel more comfortable when I'm communicating in person too so it's a professional development in itself as well yeah and I think again going back to that idea of looking at what you've done historically, I think that it's almost as important to realize like what I did at this place or what I did at that place or what I did with this team may not work with another team. And this is why, so that it can help you again, if you're running down that communication route, find 
unique ways to get the point across that'll resonate with them. And that then allows you to kind of just have two different avenues you can, because there's, at the end of the day, again, it's on the internet, it's there forever. So you can go back to the first one. That doesn't mean the first one's bad necessarily, but you got a second way to do it too. So like, if you go to team C, maybe the first stuff is a try. Some people don't get it. You've got a backup plan already. And you can just keep rolling it. It's it's all evergreen. Man. Yeah, no, I think you're you're right on with that. I think it's depending on the situation, you're going to use a different different tool for for whatever job you got to do. And that's just like exercises in the weight room, just like a, a piece of technology I have out here on the floor. You know, it, I'm not going to use a certain piece for for every team. You know, I may not I may not I may not use an R ring or a whoop band for every single team because of the size of the team. So maybe. You know, we have other things that we're going to do. Maybe we're going to use wellness metrics for a certain team because we need to first teach them about what's going on. Or maybe we need to develop more of a relationship with the athletes on a one-on-one -on -one level. Or, you know, I think it's it's all about tools and finding the, the, the right situation to use certain things. It's That's what we are as coaches and teachers. It's, you know, finding finding the pieces to the puzzle and making making athletes better. Yeah, and I think that too, you know, as you're touching upon, and we both touched upon kind of some of these 24 hour monitoring devices, like some of that too, you got to be careful with depending on who they are and how they are and what they are and all those things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think we're just learning more and more about that. And, you know, I think what an unbelievable, and I'll go back to the word tool, what a great tool for educating athletes. You know, you, you talk about your aura ring, you know, several of our teams here utilize whoop. Other teams use wellness metrics. But if you boil it down, why do you do that? Well, it's to educate the athlete on a certain type of uh, behavior that they're in, engaging in. You know, what is their sleep? What is their overall activity level? Are you using that activity level to match your nutrition to fit the caloric expenditure? You know, what is the, the overall HRV of, of my team or individual? Okay, take that information, give it to a coach. Hey, coach, we're going here, down here, so we need to maybe make an adjustment here. Same thing with a force plate. All these are tools, but you can boil it down to why are we doing it? Well, it's to influence a behavior, whether it's coaches changing a program or athletes changing behavior with lifestyle. So I think it's with all these things, you boil it down to the why, and it'll, it'll drive everything that you're doing. Yeah, no doubt. And I think that <laughs> as you start to look more and more into that why, it builds so many more questions as to but like why it is your why. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, you absolutely have to start with the why. You got to ask great questions. And I know that's, that's cliche, but if we don't have a question, we're going to be just gathering and then it's not targeted. We create you know, I, I'm, I'm a big, I, that's one of my flaws is I just create a bunch of things. And then I, I realize that I don't really have a direction that I'm going in. But I think if you start with the why, or maybe the question, a specific question, what am I trying to look at? Okay, what tool do I need to look at that problem? And then that's going to drive whatever you create, whether it's a form of a team talk, whether it's a graph to give to a coach, um, or even just a, a calendar per se. Yes, and I think that, I mean, I think we've probably all been guilty of it where there's no way to lose them faster than to just collect stuff and not do anything. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you're right on. I think if you look at some of the, you know, somebody huge the following right now is Coach Holler, um, uh, Tony Holler. Uh, John Fleury hooked me up with him, um, got me on all of his his information and his whole record rank publish is brilliant because it takes your information that you're collecting and makes it actionable to kids and they have the ability to see it and see that you're working with, with it. And same thing with coaches. You know, if we collect information, we need to be able to make it actionable for them. Now, in no way does that mean I need to give them a chart with every single metric that we collect. Create a story. We need to create a story and talk to the coaches about what we're seeing. And at the end of the day, we need to humble ourselves, especially you know, within the performance science communities. They're the decision makers. We are not driving, 
we're just informing one piece of that decision. So, but it all goes back to the why. What is my why? What is my question? Okay, here's the information. Coach or athlete, let's take it and make a change. Yeah, then firsthand, that's the hardest part, right? Is that it's like when you're seeing things and you kind of know the right way to go, but it you got to know that you're, it, it's not your ship. And that, for me, has been the hardest part of it. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, the, the neat thing, and I, and I mentioned it earlier, it, here we have such amazing coaches that have been in the game for a long time. And, and their intuition can really, and has really driven many of their decisions throughout their career. So a lot of times the, the ship they're driving, they, they already have it in a specific context. So we need to first learn the context that they're in before we can add that. You know, I, I don't know where this is from. Um, it's not an original idea, but you imagine a, a, a field, like a, like, a, like a pasture with cows and horses in it, and there's a fence on the perimeter, okay? If I come to, to the new place and I buy some property, or maybe I buy the property and I bought the livestock on there too, and I'm like, I'm gonna tear this fence down. I need to first know why the fence was there before I move it. So I think that goes back to how we can give information. I don't want to just start giving ideas, giving, giving content and, and maybe directives. I need to first understand the context, understand the fence, understand the pasture, the livestock. Then I can start kind of shaping conversations um, with people. I do think it's relationships based. Um, and I think that's kind of where everything starts. I've got to know the pasture and I got to know my fence before I make some changes. That's a sensational analogy. Stole it. Most of my stuff, man, that's just from, from, from social media, from talking to people. And just, <laughs> man, it's, uh, you can learn so much from just thinking and tying things to certain things and, and, and just realize, I think the biggest thing for me is when I try to learn something, you know, I just break down and just start with, you know, I don't, I don't know really anything about uh, a topic and I just want to be humble and try to learn as much as I can about it. So. Awesome, man. Well, Nelly, let me get you out of here on this brother. Where can people see more of this stuff? Where can if, if first of all, if you're listening right now and you're not following all this stuff, listen to this pause, and then go start following it. But where can people see more of what you're doing, what you guys got cooking up there, bud? Yeah, man. So we have, uh, we're trying to be pretty present uh, within a Penn State Applied Health and Performance Science at Twitter, on Twitter and Instagram. We are PSU underscore AHPS, Applied Health and Performance Science. We're trying to put content there, um, trying to continue to cultivate a little internship program here with academics. So we're going to get those people on. They have different interests, different topics that they're working on. And and we're just going to try to keep sharing some content for our athletes and for coaches everywhere. I love it, brother. I love it, man. Keep up the great stuff, Nelly. I appreciate everything you're doing, man, to help us all be better. And it's, it's, it is, it's, it's helping driving us all forward and it's making us all think a little deeper. And at, at the end of the day, that's what's most important, man. So I appreciate y'all doing all that work. Yeah, man, coach, I appreciate you having me on, man. I've followed you for a long time here and listened to almost every one of your, your episodes here and can't can't appreciate you enough you're you're the man for sure well appreciate that brother we'll be in touch real soon bud all right coach appreciate you man yeah man cheers